the man on the other side and he's going to tell me things. If you guys have questions, he'll just tell me. So we're going to talk through this because a lot of people today had a hard time understanding why, how and why I was using the batting as the backing on these pin cushions. So this is for long armors. Uh, it's geared a little bit more towards long arm tonight, but of course domestic folks, you can go take all this to your sit down sewing machine. So first I'm gonna talk, start with how I loaded it. So you can see here, I'm gonna just talk for a minute and then you're just gonna to go to my hands because okay. that's where we're gonna work, okay? So I've got batting and this is just a short piece. I think a lot of times people don't realize you can go short on a, I mean, I've got a, I think I have a 10 foot frame. Do I have 12. a 10, 12 foot frame? So I have a 12 foot frame, but I don't use most of this frame unless I'm doing a really big quilt. But you can go small. Um, I love these clamps. These are um, uh, red snappers because I can whip things on and off pretty quickly. So you can see I only have a width here of what 18 inches, 20 inches. It doesn't matter. I just usually find a scrap on the floor because that's where all my scraps are. They're all laying down here. Grab a scrap. I clamp it on, and then I clamp to the side, and I just want a little bit of tautness, a little bit of tightness. Somebody asked me today. Um, isn't there a lot of stretch and what padding am I using? I'm using Hobbs 8020. So you can see, I mean, I can't move it a lot. If you, of course, you're not going to use cotton. You're not going to use anything that's not sturdy. I wouldn't use wool. I'm just using, you know, just what my scraps are. You can use any scrap, but I definitely would use an 8020 because you've got st stability to it. So you can see it's stable. It's sturdy. I like my clamps on the side. When I do use small pieces or I'm using a small backing, I take these, you can use a curtain rod, you can use a stick. I just use the long red snappers and I put it underneath my my uh, my band right here. And you can see I put it up on that bar and this bar and it kind of lifts everything. So I've got those two clamps on both sides. So I'm ready. Um, so I just cut these earlier. I came down and quilted this one really quick. I have two different things I'm making tonight. One will be a pincushion. It may end up being Sunday's best, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, so I've just got a piece of Dupiani silk. Nothing, no stabilizing, no nothing underneath it because this is going to stabilize it. My quilting will stabilize it. And then this is just a doily that I cut up from all that damaged. Um, I got a lot of damaged linens this weekend. So I just cut it. I cut this one, this one, and it doesn't matter. It's not square. It doesn't matter because when it's all said and done, I'm going to trim it up. Um, so first I'm going to just baste around this whole piece. So I just want to make a frame. I want to make a frame for me to work on. And I have channel locks. Just got even just, I don't really even care about this little corner here. Okay, I've got it on a, let's see what I've got. Let's see, back up there, honey. I've got it on a seven. That's what I like to baste in. I know there's a base stitch, but I like a seven. I am working on a handy quilter machine because this is what I love. And I've got a pro stitcher. I use my computer half the time. I love it for channel locking. So I'm going to first make this square. I am going to create a square. So I'm going to put my horizontal lock on so that I, all I have to do is manipulate my fabric. I'm going to take a line straight across the, the top and then I'm going to come down the side with a vertical lock and I'm just going to manipulate and move my fabric as I go. Okay, back to horizontal. So I'm going to go back to horizontal lock. And I'm manipulating the fabric as I go. So I'm pulling and just flattening it as I go. I'm going to get to a point and then I'm going to put on the vertical lock. I'm back to vertical, and I'm going to go back up. So I've just created a perfect square. So when I go to trim this, all I have to do is follow just right outside these lines, like that, and I've created that perfect square. So now I've got the frame to work in, and this is where this is where the fun begins. So I'm going to take it off of my computer. So I'm going to disengage my gears. So now I'm ready to free motion quilt. So first I'm going to lay this little piece down and I have this scallop edge and you see it's loose. The first thing I'm going to do is go along. I am going to lay this down because I don't like that being loose. I'm going to chop this off so it won't matter. 
So the first time I go through here, I'm probably just going to use my hand. You can see my, my right hand's running the control. I'm going to just, whoops, take it out of base, right? Uh, I work in tiny stitches, so I'm at 15 stitches per inch on this one. So I'm going to hold this scallop down just ahead of me with my finger. The nice thing about linens like this, when you use a matching thread, it will just just sink into this into into the embroidery. It doesn't really matter when it matches. It's not gonna. Don't worry too much about that, because that that very loose linen will just take your thread right in. I am using Glide 40 weight color cream. Let's see, I think I got a cone right here. Let me grab one. So this is Glide 40 weight and it is cream. That is my all-time favorite color. I use it for most linens because it just matches every, every color. The only other color is linen. That's a color too. So Okay, so we're back on stitching. I've now got this really nice frame and I've got it all laid down and now I'm ready to quilt. So now what? Um, I kind of give it a look. I always let the, the piece speak to me. So like right here on this one, you can see I did a lot of echoing. I always say, if you don't know what to do, start out by echoing and then go back and start filling in. I loved these circles, so I just put spirals. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. But I just spiraled around every circle. Um, I could have done bubbles in here, but I just really like the motion of, of the echoing of these little petals. So I'm going to give a few different options of how to go about this. I like to start at the top just because I can see everything. So I'm going to start up here. If you're comfortable and your hand works really well, I'm a one-handed quilter, so I a lot of times work with my hand down here. I must say, too, I have a ruler base on. You have to have a ruler base on if you're going to use a ruler. Um, I also put this in the middle so I wouldn't be encumbered by anything. So I've got this in the, the ruler base and I've got it in the middle of my piece. So I'm going to work with my hand sometimes down here, and then my right hand is moving the controls. I know when I started quilting, I thought I had to have both hands like on the wheel. I had to have both, but it's just like driving. You don't have to have both hands on the wheel. So um, I am a one-handed driver. So whatever is your, uh, your not dominant hand, you might use it down here. If you're comfortable, I would tell you, and I can do this most of the time, but sometimes I'm going to use this little ruler. I always keep it nearby if I need it. But right now I'm going to just go around each one of these and after I'm done I'm probably going to echo it and then I'm going to come back and I'm, I always outline everything. So I'm going to go outline first and once I've outlined then I'm going to go right into my free motion quilting. So I don't break threads, I don't cut them if I don't have to. I'm going to do this whole thing in one fail swoop. So let's just have him step back and he can video and then at some point, I'm going to show you how I use this. These are the little notch rulers that I sell. I've got this little Kelly bean, and then I've got a straight. Let's see. Got this nice little one. The straight one, I use this when I'm working um, with straight edges and around things. But tonight, I'll probably just work with the little bean. I'm going to put that right there. So I'm going to free motion this, and then I'm going to come back, and I'll use this. If you need more control around objects, that little notch is good. So here we go. Okay, so I've outlined all of this. I'm going to let him go to the other side. All right, so I've gone all the way around. Now I'm going to come back and do some free motion work, and I'm going to just echo that. So let's echo for just a minute. So there, I've just echoed maybe an eighth of an inch. Echoing is always good to just give your 
give your uh, eye a rest before you go into the next thing you're going to do. So I'm going to echo again, and then I'm going to start doing some spirals around these little circles. So let's see how that goes. stop here and say when in doubt just echo if you don't know where you're going next just echo okay okay now let's say I need to get back here because I do so I'm going to just go in my ditch right here to get back that's going to be my travel So now I'm back on this flower. I've worked myself back here. So let's say you are not comfortable just freehanding around that. So a lot of times when I have some really major embroidery like, oh, a really intricate basket or an applique that has lots and lots of curves and moves, that's when I use this little thing. So this just nests right up against your hopping foot like this. And I can just take it and control I'm going to let him go to the other side so you can see it from the other side. So nested up against here, I've got my right hand on the handle. So this is moving the machine. My handle is moving it, but this is, this is almost like if, and I would never do this, but I have seen people do this. Like if that's if I had my fingers right there. I actually know somebody who does this. It makes me crazy. Um, I know people who hold this. I know people who hold this. Whatever works for you. Um, it helps sometimes if you put your elbows on the bar, if you need to do that. But for me, this just works like my fingers. So it's just controlling where I'm going. So now I've outlined this whole flower. I'm going to go back and do some free motion echoing. Okay, so let's show, I've got this itsy bitsy little line of stem stitching. So that's the kind of thing that if I need control, I can take, I can take that hopping foot and follow right along here. Okay. come along this side of the stem. You can see I pop around all over the place, and it really doesn't matter where you start or stop. You're just filling in all the area.
learn anything tonight? Okay, so then I'm probably going to take lavender thread. I like to put curves against lines for balance, so I'm going to probably just do some straight line quilting there. Um, any questions? I'll put this out. Uh, it'll post once it's live. Um, if you want to order rulers, always up in the shop now button, which must be right there. I've got a couple new pin cushions in today that got finished. Needles. I always use ballpoint needles. Those are in the shop too. Um, anything else? Anybody have questions? You can always message me, ask me here on this thread. And I hope that solved a lot of why, why the batting only. The batting only is so there's not so much bulk. And so if you're going to do a bag or a, anything that you are going to turn inside out, a little, little, um, I made that little purse the other, that little bag the other day. That's great for just batting only on the backing. So um, try it. It's fun. All right, you guys have a good night. I'm going to go watch TV now. Bye.